All right, so get this. Uh, we're diving into this political story today, and uh, it sounds like something straight out of a... A movie. Yeah, a really bizarre movie. We're talking like garbage trucks, presidential campaigns, a whole lot of controversy. Yeah, just days before the election, too. Right. It's wild. So yeah. it's October 30th, 2024. Uh, election day is like breathing down our necks. And former President Trump decides to make a campaign stop in Green Bay, Wisconsin. It's Wisconsin, right? Yeah, Wisconsin standard stuff, right? You think so? Wrong. Con he shows up riding on top of a garbage truck. Not your typical campaign vehicle. No, not at all. A literal garbage truck completely decked out with Make America Great Again signs. Oh, yeah. Plastered with them. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. It was pretty unforgettable, that's for sure. <laughs> a visual you won't forget. And, you know, it wasn't just some random publicity stunt either. Oh, so there's like a strategy behind this. Oh, yeah, definitely. It was a calculated response to something President Biden said that really set things off. OK, so rewind a little bit for us. What exactly happened? What led to Trump's grand entrance on top of this garbage truck? Well, it all started with a comedian, Tony Hincliffe, who was performing at a Trump rally. OK. And uh, he made a pretty offensive joke about Puerto Rico. Oh. Yeah, he called it a floating island of garbage. Oof. Yeah, not a good look. Definitely not. And President Biden condemned Hinchcliffe's remarks, which, you know, rightfully yeah. so. Yeah. But then he added this. The only garbage I see floating out there is his supporters. Wow. So even if he didn't mean, like, all Trump supporters, that's still... Yeah. That's a pretty loaded statement. Yeah, especially coming from a sitting president. Absolutely. Right. And you could bet that Trump was not going to let that slide. Right. His campaign jumped all over that comment, and Biden's team later tried to clarify things. What did they say? Saying it was just, you know, a grammatical error. Okay. And he was only referring to Hinchcliffe's words. Yeah, so he meant, like, the words themselves were garbage. Right, right. Yeah. But, you know, once something like that is out there... It's out there. It's out there, exactly. And that's where the garbage truck comes in. Yeah, think about it. Trump, on top of a garbage truck wearing that orange safety vest, you know, yeah. speaking to reporters, he was able to turn Biden's insult into this visual metaphor. Oh, I see. And it was brilliant, really, mm. just from a purely strategic perspective. Yeah, it's like he took that word garbage and made it into this, like, badge of honor. Right. A symbol of, like, the working class that he's saying Biden's ignoring. Exactly. He positioned himself as the champion of the forgotten man. Yeah. You know, yeah. and used that moment to really connect with his base. So he addressed the reporters. I'm guessing he didn't stop there. This probably became a whole theme for the rally. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. He continued to criticize Biden at the Green Bay rally, called the comment a disgrace. Okay. And to really drive the point home, he even managed to get endorsements from some big names in Green Bay. Like who? Packers legends, Brett Favre, and current player, A.J. Dillon. Whoa, that's huge. Yeah, having those guys up there with him definitely added another layer to this whole thing, you know. All right. Tapped into that local pride, tied into this working class hero image, and of course generated a ton of media attention. So it's less like a political rally and more like a carefully orchestrated piece of... Performance art. Yeah. Yeah, you know, that's not a bad way to put it. Whether you agree with his tactics or not, you got to admit. Yeah. The guy knows how to create a spectacle. He does, he does. How to control a narrative. For sure. Yeah. Okay, so we've got... Trump riding a garbage truck, Biden calling some people garbage, a whole lot of political theater playing out. But let's get serious for a second. What's the deeper meaning behind all of this? Like, what makes this incident something worth really unpacking? Well, you hit the nail on the head. It's about more than just a bizarre campaign stunt, you know? Right. This whole situation. It really speaks volumes about the state of political discourse today. Okay. And how easily things can spiral out of control. All right. Unpack that a bit more for me. Yeah. What's so significant about this? Well, think about it. Just one word, garbage, yeah. uttered in the heat of the moment. It became this massive flashpoint. Uh. It got picked up, twisted, amplified, weaponized by both sides. It's like a game of telephone gone wrong. Yeah. The original message gets lost in translation and everyone just ends up hearing what they want to hear. Exactly. And the thing is, this incident... It wasn't happening in a vacuum. It played perfectly into these existing narratives about both candidates. So are you saying that even without the garbage comment, we were kind of primed for this sort of explosion? In a way, yes. Mm -hmm. You know, for Trump, it reinforced this image of him as the fighter, the outsider battling the elites. Yeah. He took Biden's insult and he flipped it, mm -hmm. turning garbage into this symbol for hardworking Americans that 
he claims are forgotten by the establishment. Okay, I see that. And for Biden, I'm guessing this wasn't exactly helpful for his image either. Right. It played into these, you know, pre-existing concerns some people had about his age, his tendency for gaffes. Right. Even if the comment wasn't intentional, it gave fuel to those who were already questioning his sharpness. It's almost like, regardless of the intent, the incident just confirmed people's existing beliefs about each candidate. Precisely. And that's one of the really worrying takeaways here. We live in a time where people are so entrenched in their own echo chambers right. that they'll interpret information in a way that just confirms what they already believe. So it's not just about the words themselves. It's about how those words get filtered through our own biases and preconceived notions. Exactly. And this is where things get really dangerous because it creates this feedback loop where we're constantly reinforcing our own beliefs and demonizing those who disagree with us. Which then makes it almost impossible to have any sort of productive dialogue, right? Exactly. And without dialogue, without the ability to see things from multiple perspectives, we're just left with shouting matches and division. Okay, so this whole garbage incident, it's basically a microcosm of the bigger problems with political discourse today. We're so quick to judge, so ready to take offense, and so unwilling to listen to each other. I think that's a great way to put it. And, you know, social media just makes all of this even worse. Oh, absolutely. Things get taken out of context, spread like wildfire. And before you know it, everyone's outraged. Yeah. It's like outrage is the currency of the Internet. It's exhausting, frankly. Yeah. And it takes our attention away from the issues that really matter. Yeah, like we're so busy arguing about the word garbage that we forget to talk about healthcare education, the economy. You know, the things that actually affect people's lives. Right. It's a distraction. Yeah. And I think we need to be much more aware of that. We have to be critical consumers of information, be willing to question our own assumptions, and remember that there are real people on the other side of these debates. So as we head into the final days before the election, what should people keep in mind? I mean, how do we make sense of all this and still manage to have some hope for the future of political discourse? That's a big question. But I think it starts with each of us taking responsibility for our own roles in this. Yeah. You know? yeah. We need to be more thoughtful about the information we consume, the language we use, mm -hmm. and the way we engage with those who hold different views. It's like we need to develop a sort of political BS detector, right? Yes. Be able to cut through the noise and the drama and, and get to the heart of the matter. Yes. We need to remember that we are all citizens mm -hmm. and we should treat each other with respect, even when, especially when we disagree. Because ultimately we're all in this together. You we know. all want what's best for our country, even if we have different ideas about how to get there. Yeah, it feels like we're at this point where, like, everything is so polarized and it's easy to get caught up in that outrage cycle. It is. You know? Yeah. It's almost like we forget there's a real world out there. Right. Beyond our screens and our political tribes and all that. It's true. And that's why this incident is so fascinating. It serves as this reminder that words have power mm. and they can have real world consequences. Okay, so let's talk about those consequences for a sec. We're just a few days away from the election. How do you think this whole garbage truck saga will actually impact voters? Well, it's tough to say for sure, but I think it'll definitely have an impact on the narrative of the race. Okay. You know, for some voters, it might just reinforce their existing opinions of both candidates. Right. Those who already support Trump, they might see this as further evidence that he's a fighter, that he stands up for the little guy. And those who support Biden might see it as proof that he's gaff prone or out of touch. Exactly. But for undecided voters, though, yeah, it could potentially be a deciding factor. Really? Yeah, they might see Trump's response as clever or authentic, or they might see it as further evidence of his divisive rhetoric. So are you saying this incident could actually sway the election? It's definitely possible. Especially in a close race. I mean, we've seen in past elections how these seemingly small events can take on a life of their own and become yeah. these major talking points. Yeah. Remember the whole binders full of women comment from Mitt Romney? Oh, yeah. That became a huge deal. Exactly. Yeah. So it wouldn't be surprising to see this incident have similar impact. I mean, it's already generating a lot of buzz. And I wouldn't be surprised if it comes up in the debates. Right. Or in those campaign ads. It makes you wonder, like, what would happen if Biden had just chosen a different word? Right. Or if Trump had responded in a different way. It really shows how one seemingly small choice, one word, one action, it can have this ripple effect and completely change the course of events. It's a reminder that we should all be mindful of our words and our actions, mm. especially those in positions of power. This has been such a fascinating conversation. Yeah. It really makes you think about the power of language and how we all have a responsibility to 
you know, use it wisely. I agree. It's easy to get swept up in the heat of the moment, but we got to remember